Okay, so hey, welcome to the shop. We're, uh, we're working on a boat. Hey, so today I thought uh, we might get back and uh, tackle some electrical basics. I mean, there's a lot of terms people use all the time, short circuit and open circuit of fault or ground fault. And you know, these terms get batted around, used quite a lot, but uh, does anybody really talk about exactly what they mean? So uh, I thought we'd do that today and uh, we can uh, get a few photos in, into the video here to uh, show you what some of these conditions look like uh, in the real world. So uh, we'll start with uh, going over to the whiteboard there and uh, we'll draw out a real basic circuit and then we can start drawing in some of these uh, shorts and bolts and such and uh, show you what they really look like and what they really are. So uh, stick around. This is a good way to start out a video. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> I blew out my flip flop. For real. <laughs> I blew out my flip flop. Okay, so here we are at our whiteboard. Um, and let's uh, go ahead and we'll draw out a very basic electrical circuit and then we can start introducing some of the faults into it and I can show you uh, how they can affect our circuit here. So um, the first part of any electrical circuit is going to be a source of power. Now in our very basic example here, this source of power it can be anything. It could be a battery, an inverter, generator. It could be uh, the transformer in the marina for short power. It's just what is supplying power to our circuit in our example here. Now to build our circuit all we have to do is we start with a conductor coming away and then returning back to our source of power. So here we've built our very basic circuit. We've given our electrons a path to flow away from the source and return to the source. So basic electrical circuit, but you know, in this example, it's, well, what good is this to me? You know, electrons are flowing, but it's not doing any work. Uh, I would like this to do some work for me. So out here at the end, let's go ahead and we'll just add an appliance in here, say, let's say uh, a light bulb down at the end there. So now we have electrons that are flowing, they light our light bulb and they return back to source. We made our loop and we're getting it as the energy is flowing we're getting it to do some work for us on the way out. But <clears throat> since uh, you know there again we have our light but we have no way to control it and since I'm a control freak I'm going to say hey electrons I'm going to put a switch in here so that you do the work I want you to do when I tell you to do it. So now we have a circuit that's doing work for us and we can control that circuit. Now, electrons uh, can be overachievers and they can get a little carried away sometimes. So I'm going to put a device in here to say that, you know, if you guys get too rowdy and start causing trouble, the party's over. So right here, I'm just going to go ahead and add a fuse in there so that if our electrons get a little out of control, we can, we can shut them down, party's over. Okay, so we've got a really basic circuit here. We've got our source of power, which is doing work for us with our device or our appliance here, work that we want to do when we want it to do it. And we have a control in here so that if we get carried away, we can shut down the party. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about probably the most common term thrown around out there, and that's a short circuit. So when we're talking about a short circuit, what exactly is a short circuit? Uh, a short circuit is exactly like it sounds. We have given our electrons a shorter circuit. So if we were to imagine, we have our, we have our circuit here, circuit protected, we can on off control it as we want. We have our appliance doing the work that we want it to do. Now, let's go ahead and we've closed our switch. Energy starts flowing, work's getting done. If something occurs that we introduce a path this way, well now our flow of energy, our electrons, have a shorter path. This is a short circuit. So it might prefer to go this way. Maybe this is the path of least resistance. In that case, 
uh, our device or our appliance is not functioning. There could be uh, the case here where there's enough resistance to allow this to work partially. Uh, there could be no, almost no resistance in this, which in that case, more current will flow than what we've designed into this system. And in that case, we should blow that circuit breaker or this fuse. Okay, so I'll put a picture up on the screen here of a short circuit and you can see that. Okay, so it, what's happened with this device is we had the two cables coming into it and the insulation had failed on them. The insulation made, melted away and the conductors made contact. And instead of going through the device and doing the work that we wanted it to do, uh, it found a, a shorter path, a short, shortened circuit through those wires where they touch there. And of course, since it was a uh, high resistance connection, you can see it just generated more heat and further caused the insulation to melt away. Okay, so when we're talking about short circuits, there's another one that gets tossed around and that's called a dead short. Now, a uh, dead short is a, a short, we've made a short, short circuit of very low resistance. So whatever power source you're using can push as much energy through it as possible. Example of that would be, we got our battery and we drop a tool and it makes contact between the positive and the negative of this battery. But at that point, the full amperage of this battery is going to rush through there and it, it, it causes a lot of problems. This is why we're so proud to protect the terminals of the batteries because there's a lot of energy right here. Okay, so another condition that can happen with our circuits is uh, what we call high resistance. Uh, it's not really a fault, it's not really a short. Uh, it is just we have introduced resistance to the flow of energy through our circuit. Now, uh, let's take our simple little circuit here again and we have closed our switch. Energy begins to flow. Well, if we have something like a, we have some corrosion in the wire that is not allowing all the, f the current to flow that we need. What ends up happening is that all the energy that we want to flow through this to power our appliance or our device and do the work that we want it to do, a lot of that energy is getting spent over here making heat. And if you're making heat, we're not working as hard as we could be over here. Uh, we're losing some of that energy and we're just creating heat. And uh, when you make heat, the heat causes fire. So that's uh, you know, probably the biggest problem. You know, the other one is our appliance is not going to work uh, because it's not getting the current that it wants. So um, example of that uh, we'll put up on the screen. Now that's just a light switch uh, in this particular boat. The, the lights weren't quite as bright as they ought to be. And when we looked, we found that uh, the light switch there uh, was at 144 degrees. <laughs> so we were getting some resistance through that switch and it was making a lot of heat. So the energy that was supposed to be lighting the lights was now being used to heat up the switch. And we don't want that. Okay, so now let's talk about the probably the most common electrical problem that's out there. And that is, any guesses? I was surprised to see it too. It's called the unwanted open. Now, unwanted open, what is that? Well, when we open a circuit, we have stopped power from flowing. Just like in our little, our basic circuit here, we have opened our switch. We've turned power off. Nothing can flow here because our switch is open. Now this is a wanted open. We wanted this to happen. We wanted to turn off our device. Now if we have, say, an unwanted open, something has gone into the circuit and broken it. So for instance, uh, we turn our, we close, we close our switch, current begins to flow, we're powering our device, we're getting the work we want done done. 
Now, say, actual case, just recently, uh, we had a light circuit. The light is not coming on. We have no power to the light. Uh, interestingly enough, we found a screw that secured the light fixture to the bulkhead. Uh, our light was not energized, but our screw was. The screw basically broke that connection as it went through the bulkhead. It caused an unwanted open. Uh, you could argue that if the fuse blows, also an unwanted open, because we didn't want that to happen, but it did. So that is probably the most common problem out there is an unwanted open. Something comes along and opens the circuit when we didn't want it to. Okay, so looking at the board, you can see I changed things and saved the best for last. Uh, everybody's favorite, ground fault. What is a ground fault? Well, step back just a, just a little bit um, and talk about what is a fault. A fault is a pretty broad term and we can actually put, say, a short circuit into the category of a fault because a fault is just electricity going somewhere that we did not want it to go. So in the case, if it's a short circuit, we wanted it to go to the device and back, but as we showed uh, earlier, that a short circuit will find another path. It's a shorter path back, and we're not getting, the electricity is not going where we want it to go. So <clears throat> right here, I've drawn just a simple AC circuit. So let's just call this our 120 amp, excuse me, 120 volt AC circuit. So we have source of power over here. We have our appliance over here. Circuit protection, a switch, a line, a neutral, and an AC safety ground. Now, if you were to imagine, let's say our line here happened to come in contact with the case or the chassis of this appliance. So our line has shorted to, our, to the chassis, or the case of our appliance here. And what we hope to, to happen, what should happen, is that that current that's energizing the case of the chassis of our appliance can find a path back to its source along the AC safety ground. Now, because there's no device here, there's no resistance of the device between line and ground now, the current flow through here is going to exceed what we've designed this circuit to carry and what we've circuit protected it for. So we should blow that fuse, trip that circuit breaker, turns off power, and uh, that's how a, uh, the AC safety ground should work in the case of a ground fault. Uh, <clears throat> if you give me a minute, I'm going to clean the board off again and change things. And uh, we're going to uh, draw in a boat with a ground fault, and uh, I'll show you why uh, that is such a big deal. Okay, so I wanted to draw in an AC ground fault in, uh, in our boat and kind of maybe try to very simply explain why it's such a big deal and why we're getting so much, paying so much attention to AC ground faults on our boats now. Uh, you know, in our example here, we have uh, our source of power, which more than likely is the big transformer on, in the marina somewhere. We've got our shore cord plugged into our little boat with line neutral AC safety ground. Uh, we'll call this our 30 amp shore cord, just to be simple. And that goes into our boat. We have our breaker panel. And we have a circuit, line neutral AC safety ground going to our little appliance here. <coughs> now what I want to do is draw in a fault, an AC ground fault, on our little appliance here. And an AC ground fault, all we're talking about here is that through, say, an internal failure of the appliance or the device, maybe the wire going into the device chafed on a sharp edge, but some, something has occurred that has energized the case or the chassis of the device. And what we want to happen instead of having this device just sitting there energized waiting for somebody to come along and become part of the circuit. We want that fault current to be conducted back to source along the AC safety ground back to the source of power. Now, if we 
fault to the case of this appliance, uh, what ideally should happen is that the current going through the chassis or the case of the device to AC safety ground and back, that should, without the resistance of the device in the line, uh, that current should exceed what we've designed this circuit to carry and we should trip a circuit breaker and de-energize that circuit. And that way uh, it's safe. So as soon as this circuit is made, we trip that breaker and it's safe. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw in our uh, AC ground fault on our uh, little appliance here, but let's draw it in without a functioning AC safety ground between our boat and the source of power. So, uh, you know, we could have a failure, there could be a failure of the AC safety ground somewhere in our boat. Uh, could be in our shore power receptacle on our end, it could be on the marina's end. Uh, the marina wiring may not be up to snuff. There's a lot of points where this uh, AC safety ground could fail or not be adequate for the job we want it to do. So let's uh, go ahead and break that AC safety ground and a fault to our device here. So our line faults to the case of the chassis of our device. Our device is energized now. Our fault current is going to travel along our AC safety ground and it's going to try to leave the boat by means of the short cord and the AC safety ground and the short cord, but it can't. That AC safety ground has failed. What that current then is going to do is it's going to find a path back to source through our boat's underwater metal and it's going to find that path from the case of the device along the AC safety ground to the boat's common ground point where the DC negative, the bonding, and the AC safety ground all come together. And that current is going to say, well, I can get back to source through the water like that. Now, the problem with that is, is that the resistance through the water is so great that not enough current from this fault, not enough fault current is going to flow through the water back to here to trip our circuit breaker like it would in the case of a fault being carried on the AC safety ground. So this fault current is just sitting out here in the water and it's waiting for something or someone to come swim by and become part of this circuit to help complete that circuit between here and here. And uh, if we happen to swim through this, this voltage field here, uh, then we, our bodies, would become part of this circuit and uh, it can be uh, catastrophic. So that's why we're making such a big deal about AC ground faults on boats. Okay, so hey, that's our show. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, and if you have any questions about what we covered today, uh, you can always put those questions down in the comments. Uh, also, if you have a question about something on your boat that you don't quite understand or have always been curious about, uh, put that question in the comments too. Uh, it helps us generate some content and uh, keep this thing entertaining. So uh, anyway, uh, we'll talk to you next time, man. Keep working on your boat.